Hey everyone, how's it going? Shuffles back here with another video, and today we are today's tier list day. Um, it's been three months since the last tier list. I am putting these out quarterly now. It gives a little bit of time to kind of let the meta shift in for new units to come out, make things a little bit different, uh, instead of just basically recording the same video over and over. So that's what we're going to go over today. Uh, there are all the five stars are in this video. All the four stars are in this video. The specialty changes are not. I know people keep asking for that, but we keep getting more and more units and there just isn't space to also add the three stars. For the most part, you guys know what the three stars do. You don't need to see them on the tier list. If you ever have any questions, uh, maybe I can make a video about that. If you do want that, leave it down in the comment section below, as well as any other suggestions you guys might have. So let's jump over into the video. All right, so for those of you that have never been on the channel before, just so you know, I do focus primarily on PvP. Come tomorrow, we will push up into Legend Arena as well, but it is between Arena seasons right now, so it's not really a big deal. Also in RTA, I am currently top 50 in the world in RTA, and that's where the prime, uh, most of my top gear goes on and where most of my focus is. I am going to try in this tier list to let you guys know one way or another where the unit is good and what they're good for. Uh, we're going to go through every single unit. It's going to be a long video. If you need a snack, pause the video, go grab a drink and come back. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below and let's just jump right into it. So leading things off at the bottom of the list here, we have two units, one that's not out yet uh, in ML Violet. Just so you know, I am going to put the camera up, but I did change the format a little bit. That's why the screen isn't exactly full screen, but this allows it to be a little more interactive. Uh, people were asking to like be able to put a border around whoever I'm talking about or something. Uh, so this way I can, you can see the little blue border around him. And then if I move over to her, you can see the little blue border around her. Um, that way it'll be easier for you guys to see who we're talking about. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go from the bottom all the way up to the top, go moving from left to right. Um, so first up is Celine. Celine just came out and I decided not to put her, like she's here, but I decided not to rank her because we really don't know yet. I did do some testing myself. I think as an anti-cleave unit, she can be really good. Um, but I think that's probably not where she shines. If you really want to make her good, I think you're gonna have to plus 15 her and build her as a bruiser with anti-cleave being just like an outside option for her. I think as a bruiser, she'd function much better against like DN comps or something like that in RTA. Um, also, you could use it against really fast comps potentially in arena if you want to build like a counter, counter cleave arena team or maybe potentially for Guild War. But like I said, there hasn't been enough testing on her yet. I feel like if I had to rank her, I'd probably rank her in like that between somewhere between the A and S range. But I don't really want to give her a firm ranking until she is tested a little bit further. Same goes for Violet. I feel like the community is stressing out about Violet quite a bit. So I did put him on the list, even though he's not even technically in the game yet. He will be out on Wednesday, which is only a few days away. Um, I don't even want to guess where he's going to fall. We'll have to see. But he will be in the next tier list. So moving up to the D part of the tier list, now that we have that out of the way, I'm going to pull the camera up here. Uh, we're going to go through the D part pretty quick. We got in water, we have Zeno and Zerato. Both of them don't really have a use in the game right now, unfortunately. Um, Zerato is basically an imprint for ML Zerato, and that's about it. He does have some utility potentially, but there's so many options out there that I just don't see a reason to build him. Moving, up, moving on to Fire, we have Mercedes, Corvus, and Haste. None of these are really used anymore. Corvus was used before he got his nerf. Uh, Haste as well used to be one of the best units in the game before Wyvern expanded to include other levels. Um, but they don't. none of these really have a use right now. I think ML Haste, or sorry, not ML Haste. Regular Haste really needs a buff. Then we have Maya, Kwazu, and Kizuna. Kizuna making her first appearance on the list as she did just come out. Uh, I really don't recommend building her. I don't really see a purpose for it. She's got an okay kit uh, in terms of healing and stuff. 
but all of you already have healers built. Unless you're in your first few weeks in the game, I don't see any use to really invest into her. And finally, Elfelt for fire. Uh, the reason I have her this low is because something's got to be bugged with her kit. Her damage is on par with something like a Maid Chloe. Um, my Maid Chloe does pretty much the same amount of damage as Elfelt does, except Elfelt's on a damage build and... My Maid Chloe is on an HP and speed build. Um, it's really disappointing. Even with a couple of Molas into her, she just does no damage whatsoever. Uh, it You can make it look like she does damage because there's attack buff defense break. But like then at that point, everyone would do damage. And you could use someone like Haste if you're going to do that. So um, I don't see any point in building her until they fix her. And finally, for the D tier, we have Cartusia. Uh, the only wind unit, he doesn't really have a use either. He did get a couple of buffs, but nobody's really building him. He is currently just an ML Cartusia imprint. All right, moving up to the C tier. We'll start at the bottom with Roman. Roman, you could argue, should be higher on this list. Um, but there's so many good strips out there that I just don't see the justification in building him as your stripper when you've got like Basar, you've got Parado, you've got um, a couple of the other newer ML or well the, the Cerise and you've got uh, Lydica also strip both Lydicas there's just so many options to strip that I don't see him being a primary option so I left him lower on the list for that reason if he's all you've got in terms of a strip, then he would be higher on the list. Uh, up next, we have a couple water damage dealers in Kali and Clarissa. You could argue that you could use Clarissa in Wyvern, but you're probably not going to use her in Wyvern 13, and you're not going to use Kali either. I think both of these are just imprints for their ML versions. I wouldn't bother building them unless you are just building them for fun, and... That's really the only thing I can think of. Maybe for Guild War, but like I said, there's so many better options out there, especially with new Net 5s coming every other week. Uh, I wouldn't bother building either of those. Up next, we have Crozet. Crozet was actually really good for Wyvern 11, and now that the next stages have come out, he's fallen off. Um, again, he's another one. I think he's uh, an imprint for his ML counterpart. I wouldn't bother building him anymore unless you're really early game and then maybe you can make him five star just as a tank and then use him as food later on. Moving on to fire, we have Cowrick who never really panned out the way we thought he was going to. He's a speed based damage dealer. I was really accept, uh, excited for him, but his damage is super underwhelming. Um, I know some people use him to counter Bissar, but I just don't see it. It's, uh, if you're going to do that, there's many other units that can counter Bissar. You can either go with a high-res cleanse or you go with someone like Fire Lytica. Just completely way better options out there. Up next, we have Era. Era is a one of only three mages that provide attack buff, but she does minimal damage with it. She does have a stun now, but if you're looking for a stun, there's just better options. She's another one that she can do the job if you have nothing else, but there's way better options out there. Dingo, nobody's building him. He's another one that's an uh, imprint for his ML counterpart. Cirilla, same uh, same thing. There's just better options out there in terms of what to build as a, a fire damage dealer. Um, you're going to hear that a lot from the fire damage dealers because there's really nowhere other than RTA and potentially Guild War that you'd even want a fire damage dealer. Uh, I know someone inevitably in the comments isn't going to watch the actual video and they're just going to say well that unit should be higher because they can be used in golem yes that's true but so can every other unit in the game and they can probably do a better job and nobody farms golem anyway so there's really no need to ever farm golem i think i've farmed golem a grand total of like three times um and i don't mean like three sessions i mean like three runs there's just no reason to do it especially with all the free attack gear out there and there's just better sets so Moving on, we have Kiwana next. Uh, Kiwana, if you're running an all-fire team, would be fantastic. Unfortunately, running all-fire doesn't really make any sense, especially with a uh, relatively heavy water meta. Um, she doesn't really see any play. Saul's another one. Saul is a good K-Ron counter, but that's about it. Uh, again, he could be used in Golem, but if you're building units for Golem, you're probably wasting resources. 
Moving on to nature, we have Leo. Now, Leo is the first person on this list that actually moved up from last time. Uh, the last tier list, I had Leo in D tier. And funny enough, I think I got more people saying that Leo should be higher than anybody else on the list. So I moved Leo up to a C tier. I'm shocked as many, I'm shocked as many people had built him as were in the comment section. Uh, I assume every single person in the history of the game that's ever built Leo was in my comment section in the last video, but I did move him up just for you. I still can't justify moving him up higher because I think there are better options out there, but he did move up. Moving on to the light units, we have Free Spirit Tiaria. Free Spirit Tiaria is an interesting one. She is brand new to the game. She's a good farmer. Uh, I don't think that you're going to use her anywhere ever um, unless you're really early game now if you're just starting the game you can ignore this this tier list is probably a little bit too advanced for an early game player like i mean in the first few weeks of the game like you're not you're like under level 40. uh you can build her up to five star use her as a farmer she'll be a great free to play farming option if you got somebody like say a cigarette from your um from your rerolls then you can use tiara as your farmer and you're good to go um but beyond that if you're already level 60 and mid like even late early game mid game or late game there's no reason to waste any resources into her most people didn't even bother skilling her up to fill the adventures path because they wanted to save the molas so i would do not recommend building her and finally for the c tier we have roaming warrior leo um until a unit comes out with detonate he is not going to be impactful really that being said that we did see a couple new units that could potentially be bomb detonators that were leaked in one of the stories so maybe we see them sometime soon and then maybe leo gets his place in the meta moving up to the b tier we'll start at the bottom on the water side we have furious uh furious is still sometimes used in wyvern 13. uh i think th i think terran regards probably just a better option but he is right up there as one of the best wyvern defense breakers the only reason he's not higher is because you can use a three star that doesn't take any molas uh that's actually better than him so if you want to use furious go right ahead but with molas being short uh, as your defense break for Wyvern 13, I probably still recommend the Terranor Guard. And because you don't need the Molas, I have to keep Furious down a little bit lower. Moving on is Crean. I really like Crean. She's a fun unit to use. She just doesn't really have too much of a place right now. She's hard to use in terms of damage because uh, you need really good gear on her for her to good, do good damage. And then you probably won't have the effectiveness. Um, I don't think a lot of people are using her in Wyvern 13, although you could make her work outside of that she doesn't really have a place at all so she stays b tier even though she's a good unit she has her own defense break she can do big damage she just doesn't really have a huge place in the meta right now there's a lot of better options out there up next we have dominiel and dominiel is an interesting one she has an aoe stun she has a reflect um she can be really scary but she's also very 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 niche uh, and hard to use you can't use her in guild war you probably can't use her in arena I've seen her used a few times in RTA early on, but not really anymore at all. Um, so she's going to stay at B tier just because of her lack of flexibility. Moving on, we have Sez. Sez is still a top tier damage dealer in terms of farming, but most of us don't have any issues farming at all in terms of adventure. Or like me, you just never farm adventure at all. Um, so he really doesn't have a use because you're not going to use him anywhere else in the game past a certain point. Uh, not worth investing in him because he's not somebody you're going to use long term. Up next, we have Yuna. She's kind of similar. She is great for Automaton Tower if you want to six star her just for Automaton Tower speedruns. Outside of that, her buffs are good, but she's hard to use. Uh, if you have Drink, you could put it on her, but odds are if you have Drink, you're using it on SSB. Um, until there's another SSB rerun, I don't think we'll see a lot of Yuna. But. If there is an SSB rerun and people get multiple copies of Drink, then Yuna could become a force. Uh, and finally, we have Luna. And Luna is actually the first person, I think, on the list that dropped this month. Um, I had her A tier with Chloe and Kize, but she's dropped down to B tier now. Um, 
I've never really liked her, and she's just slowly been dropping down the list, especially now that she doesn't have a place in Wyvern. There's just better options all the way around. If something ever comes out where Luna is... I say there's a dungeon that comes out that requires you to not land debuffs and you can turn her skills off. Um, then she would have a place again, potentially. But until that happens, I don't think anybody will be using her anytime soon. Uh, mainly, just finishing thought on her. The main reason is because her skill 1 damage, although it can be good, is just way too RNG for PvP. Um, if you get lucky, you win. If you don't get lucky, you lose. It's not a good, reliable unit. And if you're doing PvP that way, you're probably not being very successful. So, Moving on to fire, we have Sermia. Sermia, top tier, single target nuker. Um, I just... I can't justify her being higher just because she's fire. She does hit hard, but really I never see her used anywhere other than Golem, and people that are farming Golem, I always tell them not to. So occasionally you could use her in Guild War. I just don't see her as a unit that you should probably invest in when there's people that hit just as hard that have more uses and are more flexible. So that's kind of this B tier is... Yes, this unit can do this, but there's somebody in the game that does it better, and you should probably build them instead. Think like a Watcher Shuri, who's element neutral, uh, and does more damage. There's a lot of units like that in the game that are just hard-hitting single-target damage dealers. And being fire kind of limits her in terms of her flexibility. Up next, another unit that got bumped this month is Fire Charlotte. So Fire Charlotte, I had C tier last month. I did move her up to B because she's a little bit more unique now in terms of her skill 1 AoE. She can be a little bit scary. The thing I don't like about her is that her skill 3 it needs a certain amount of focus in order to be able to use, which I really don't like units that have that. Um, it makes her very difficult to use. I still don't think her rework makes sense, and I also really don't like uh, skill 1 AoEs. I don't think they should be in the game. For both sides, they can be incredibly negative. Um, it can be debilitating for the defense, the person facing the Charlotte, because you just can't get away from it. You're always getting hit every single turn. And also, on the other side of the coin, say you're going up against an SSB, which is one of the most meta uh, relevant units right now, you're going to proc you're going to hit four people every single time you move. Uh, Charlotte against a lot of the units right now, especially with all the counters in the current meta. Uh, she just so... She is... She basically counters herself by having that skill one AoE and being a fire unit. Up next, we have Surin and Shuri, two units that are very similar and that they both have 14 speed imprints. These are the two biggest speed imprints in the game. Um... That being said, they're a little bit different in terms of Shuri being a booster and has an AoE, and Sir, it would be Saren would be single target and doesn't really have a lot of utility otherwise. Um, I am building Saren actually once I get a couple more imprints because I do want that single target imprint option. Uh, whereas Shuri, I don't really have the. He's not going to kill anybody. I'm hoping to be able to kill somebody with the Saren, uh, but we'll see. I'll keep you guys updated if I end up doing that. Moving on to Wind, we'll start with Rin. Uh, Rin is an interesting one. I almost moved her down because really there's no place for her right now. You could potentially use her, but there's just better options again. Really no time, no no point wasting more time talking about her. Um, she is an interesting kit. She's fun. She's more of a toy, I think, than anything. Um, but she's really not meta relevant right now. Moving on to Purgis. Purgis is actually a decent... Uh, arena defense unit and it was for a while I feel like most people have gotten to the point where they're not as worried about him anymore they're just going to single target nuke him uh, but he can be very scary it could also be used in rta in the same way but he's very niche and for that reason he will not move much higher than this so he's going to be in b tier similar to lots lots with his ml version being ox lots lots doesn't get a lot of play but he could potentially be used very successfully if you're going to run a double lots comp that's not to say double lots comp isn't good, but again, it's very niche and kind of keeps him from moving up any further. Uh, he'd be fantastic early game, but you won't really use him very much late game if you do decide to build him. Then we have Armin. 
Armin, Green Armin, is actually a stun machine. A lot of people I know use her in Guild War, so you can build her if you want to. I still feel like there's better options, but, you know, you can build her if you want to. She's uh, a unit that a lot of people who do use her seem to really like her. Then we have Ludwig. Ludwig is a great AoE damage dealer. You can use him in Arena. Unfortunately, that's about it. Um, you could technically use him in Guild War as well if you're running him with Bingo. But he needs such good gear to work that you probably are better off putting that same gear on somebody else. So um, putting your best gear on him, because he's a little bit niche, you can't use him against everything. I feel like you're kind of limiting yourself. Unless you have an insane amount of damage dealer gear um, and you don't know what to do with it, then you can put it on him. And finally, for the wind units, we have Silk. Silk, I feel like could be a little bit better in the meta. She just doesn't get used very often. She does have a speed buff and a speed break, which could be crazy against the right team. Unfortunately, you need to land the strip first, and then you need to land that, and it's just way too many res checks in order to be reliable. So we're going to leave her at B tier for now. Moving on to the light units, we have Fighter Maya. Fighter Maya could arguably be higher. That's another one. Um... She, she can do big damage. She's very scary in RTA now if you don't have a way to deal with her. That being said, she's still somewhat niche. Um, I kind of struggled with where to put her. She's not an easy one for me to place. Uh, but she is a defense-based damage dealer, and in RTA she can be very good. I just think that's probably the only place for her. And then we have Guider Aether. Guider Aether is an interesting one because she's the only mage with attack buff, a single target nuke, and can hold book at the same time. I actually use her on my arena offense, and I have for months now. Um, a big part of my legend arena offense for the last three seasons. Um, and I, she's irreplaceable, so I can't argue that. That being said, she is kind of one-dimensional in that it's in a specific team, in a specific use case, and can't be used anywhere else. So, for that reason, I can't justify moving, moving Guider Aether any higher, but there is a use there, and I'm glad that I'm using Guider Aether. Moving on to the A tier, we have Chloe and Kize, two hard-hitting single-target damage dealers. Chloe does have a defense break with her exclusive or the ability to get an extra turn, plus Nail. I know a lot of people are using her in Wyvern. I don't necessarily think she's optimal in Wyvern, um, as there are there is a, another unit that's significantly better than Chloe, but she is fun and probably my favorite voiceover in the game, so or voice acting in the game. So she's definitely a good option. Then with Kize, Kize now is actually quite scary in PvP. A little bit difficult to use. But against the right stuff, she can be really, really, really strong. Uh, the ability to give herself stealth plus shield is a lot bigger than people think. The shield, because she doesn't come out of stealth unless you break the shield. So if you remove the shield, then she stays in stealth unless you do damage on top of that. So um, that shield is relatively thick and it's not overly easy to get her out of stealth. And she can be a real pain and can allow you to bring a squishy damage dealer into a team that maybe you might have a hard time with otherwise. Um, somebody like Kali, maybe if you bring it in, maybe it's too easy to get her out of stealth and then she dies. Uh, but Kize can be a great option. Up next we have Angelica. Angelica actually has dropped a little bit. Uh, I had her hire a couple, a couple of videos ago. And I moved her down last video, and we have to keep her here. She's kind of dropped out of the meta a little bit. The reason she stays as high as she is is just because of how good she is early in the game. She It will carry you through the early part of the game. Um, but late game, you probably won't need her. That being said, she is one of the best healers out there uh, in terms of pure healers. It's just there's a lot of other options out there, and you need more now than just to heal and immunity than you used to when she was top tier. Moving on, we have Rose. Rose actually moved up on the list. I had her B last time, but now with her exclusive equipment, uh, she's moved up one, and I think rightfully so. She has decent base speed now. She's got attack buff, a boost. She's being used a decent amount in RTA. Um, Outside of that, I don't really see much of a use for her, so I can't justify moving her any higher. You could potentially use her in Wyvern, but I think 
RTA is her main go-to. And she's solid there if you have a team that's going to work around her. She can be very scary. Moving on to Fire, we have Fire Ravi. Fire Ravi, another one, solid Guild War unit. You could potentially use her on Guild War defense um, and Guild War offense for that matter. Also kind of scary in RTA as she, her damage does escalate quite quickly and she can be very hard to kill with her self-sustain. Um, very good unit. I still think there's probably better options out there. That's why she's only A tier. But she is a very good and very scary option for RTA as well. Moving on to Akades, one of the better cleansers in the game, um, plus very short cooldowns. So if you're, if you're going into, say, a debuff team, I actually had her geared for like heavy debuff RTA comps where people are bringing like Basar, another strip with Dizzy and ML Era, and I was running my Akades really high effectiveness, hoping that she could resist everything and then cleanse the rest of the team. You just make her your fastest unit. And she was working really well. Uh, the reason I don't use her anymore is because there's a couple of units now that are slightly better, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But if you don't have any o other options for cleanse, she is one of the best options in the game for that. Up next, we have Melissa. And Melissa actually moved up this month. Um, she, had, she was B tier last month. But with the threat of ML Violet coming, she can... We just tested this, actually. Her strip is similar to Flurry strip, where even if she misses her attack, the strip will still land. So, say Violet has his thing up on him, she will strip first, and then be able to crit and land her curse. So she is probably the best Violet counter right now, if you can get her in. Um, so she might be worth building just for that. Um, also, she can be very scary as is. She's already very hard hitting. Fire damage dealer, she's got good base stats, uh, and she can hold book as well. So I moved her up on the list just because of the fact that she's very well rounded now all of a sudden. And she has something that is probably going to be really hard to counter, and she'll be probably best in game at countering that unit. So uh, keep her in mind moving forward starting next week once Violet hits the meta. And up next we have Fire Lytica, and I've been seeing more and more of her just because her base speed is so insanely high. Plus she has the pushback, plus she has a guaranteed strip if you burn into it. She can be very scary in RTA as well. Anything with high base speed like that is a potential threat. Um, especially because, as we know, this is and always will be a speed meta. So keep her in mind if, you, if you're struggling to get first turn and you're getting out sped a lot. You can potentially put your best gear on her and then start out speeding people because she has so much better base speed. So, excuse me. But particularly like against a Bizarre, she has, I can't remember his, I think he's 108 and she's like 124 or something like that. So she's like 16 higher base speed. That can make a big difference, especially when the speed set is percentage based and even gives you even more speed on that. So, uh, Lytica, great unit, a little bit niche, but great unit. Up next, we have the wind unit, starting with Bellina. Bellina is another one. She's kind of fallen off a little bit. Uh, I know a lot of people are using her in AZ-13, and you can use her there. She's also great in most PvE content. She's great in Abyss. Um, outside of that, though, once you're done with PvE, you probably won't use her all that often, unless you're using her for farming uh, one of the dungeons. But she's still very good. She still has a use, and... With her defense break being 100% now, she's kind of scary. Uh, I hope... I, I don't know. I feel like there's a use for her that we're maybe not thinking of, and I feel like I should probably be using her more than I am. Um, unfortunately, I don't have molas to finish mulling her, and I didn't do it earlier, so... For me, anyway, she won't be getting much use, but I do really like her, and I think she has a lot of potential. Up next, we have Biken. So, with the Biken rerun recently... Um, we saw a little bit of a flash of Biken use in RTA. Not all that much, though. Unfortunately, my Biken needs a little bit better gear to be as good as I'd like her to be. But the attack bar boost, plus great base speed, plus pretty good damage, um, and the ability to one-shot Banshee if you're farming Banshee, then for that reason alone, she puts up here. You could argue she'd be higher just because of the Banshee alone. Um, but I don't think Banshee is something that's mandatory, so 
depending on how you play the game, she could potentially move up to an S tier or she could stay in the A tier. So that one's arguable depending on what you prioritize. Up next, we have Rowana. Now, Rowana, I'm sure is going to be a controversial one. I feel like people are going to think she should be higher because they use her to counter SSB, and that's fine, but she you have to remember that she's also hard countered by SSB. If SSB uses her skill three and puts up the heal block, buff block, then Rowana is quite literally useless against that. Um, and outside of SSB counters, she doesn't do anything at all to anybody, really. So for that reason, I couldn't justify moving her any higher. I really don't think it's worth investing too much in Rowana. There's not really many places you're going to use her, unless maybe you're using her in an auto arena offense but that i mean there's a lot of things you could use for that you don't really need her for that so just an option but uh and a good option like i have gear on her but i don't think she needs to be any higher than a on this list moving on we have pavel now pavel's gotten a couple of buffs now and he's actually quite scary if you go up against one that being said he is a little bit hard to use. Um, I don't know. He's he's tricky. He has very good base speed. He can hit very hard against an SSB, but he's very niche. Um, because he's so niche and primarily used against SSB again, uh, very similar to Rowana, I can't justify moving him any higher than that, but he is very good at what he does if you want to build him for that. Up next, we have Violet. And I actually moved Violet down one this month. Um... He was S tier, but with the introduction of so many new bruisers coming out with ML Violet, with Charlotte, uh, with the Tywin buff, there's just, there's so much, plus some, a couple more fire units. I feel like Violet has to move down a little bit. Um, he's still good. He's still fantastic in certain situations. He's another one that's a solid SSB counter. Uh, he's a solid Dizzy counter, but that's pretty much it. I don't see him being used much more than that. Another unit that I moved down this month is Sid, and I still really love Sid. He's got a speed imprint. Um, just with the way units have evolved and the fact that the power creep is real and the new units that are coming out are always a little bit stronger, I feel like they're starting to pass the Sid, so he's not quite as good as he used to be. That being said, he still has a speed imprint, which makes him very relevant. Uh, speed imprints will always be coveted and be very relevant in the game in terms of taking first turn. Plus, he can do huge damage, defense break. He can basically solo a team by himself. Um, he's just a little more niche than he used to be, so he's going to stay in the A tier. Moving on, speaking of speed imprints, we have Watcher Shuri. So, Watcher Shuri, another 10 speed imprint. Very strong. He can one-shot anybody in the game. Um, the problem is... If you're going to put him on immunity or if you're going to make him do enough damage to one-shot somebody, he's going to be very slow. And that's fine, but he's going to be very niche into very specific cleave teams that can utilize him. And you have to build a team around it. Uh, you can use him in Guild War offense, but he doesn't have many uses outside of that. That being said, because he has 100% ignore defense, he is one of the best single target nukers in the game. Uh, we already talked about... Uh, Sermia a little bit earlier, but he is just that next step up. So in terms of squishy units that can do maximum damage, he is probably the best at what he does, um, which is what gets him to A rank with the imprint. But I can't really justify, because he doesn't do as much, I can't justify moving him any higher. Up next, we have ML Era. Now, ML Era has gotten a bit of a use in RTA. So she has moved up a little bit to A tier. And I really, she can be very scary and debilitating if you go up against her with the right comp. Again, though, somewhat niche, hard to use. You're relying on a lot of res checks in order to get the strip and then the stun. Um, and if they have immunity or put up immunity or have a high res cleanse or anything, she can be easily countered. So for that reason, she's going to stay at A. Uh, let's leave Cern for the last one on the light units. Up next, we have Wander Silk. We already talked about Fire Lytica a little bit. Wander Silk is almost the same thing. They're basically identical um, in terms of their kits. So not much else to say there. Very good unit, very good base speed, can lock down 
one unit on the enemy team if you need somebody to do that. Uh, you can use her the same way as we just talked about with Lytica. Up next, we have Blaze Dingo. Blaze Dingo is actually very scary in RTA. I don't really have see him used anywhere else but RTA, but if you get into a match with a Bingo and a C or and an Oxlots, know that he can potentially one-shot you. Um, because with his new exclusive now, he can burn into his skill three, put up greater attack buff, and then auto get an extra turn, use his greater attack buff with himself, and AoE nuke you plus an extra turn on top of it. And now all of a sudden he's taking three turns and AoE you with greater attack buff. And if you've ever seen Vivian AoE attack with greater attack buff, uh, you know how scary that can be, or Kron for that matter. Um, I remember I went into a team with a bingo and an oxlots and a bbk and i was like oh he just has this was a while ago but i was like oh he only has bbk is damage and two attack buffers i'll just ban the damage and i'll be fine and he buffed the bingo and nuked my entire team so keep an eye out for him he can be very scary that being said if you know it's coming then you can kind of plan around it but he can hit very hard and is a little bit flexible because he does provide a heal as well. Up next, we have General Purgis. General Purgis is probably the king of Wyvern right now, to be honest. Uh, he's the only reason he is still this high is because of that. I had him around this rank earlier for other reasons, but he's kind of fallen off in that regard and moved up in terms of Wyvern. So everyone's kind of switched their gear over. So he's not here for the same reasons as he was last month, but he's still here because he is probably the best unit to use in Wyvern right now, for Wyvern 13. All right, moving on to the dark units. We'll start at the top. We got ML Crozet. Uh, ML Crozet, actually quite good right now, very good in RTA. He can really protect somebody. He has a very high counter rate and a very high stun rate. Um, it can be really annoying to fight against. That being said, you do need Molas to scale him up, which sucks. Um, if Molas were easier to obtain, I think you'd see a lot more of him, but he can be very good. Similar to Shadow Rose, another one who could be very good, but who has Molas to scale up Shadow Rose? I think she'd be fantastic in RTA. I think she'd have a lot of potential there. Uh, Kitty Clarissa is somebody that's used a lot in Hall of Trials right now. A lot of people are using her to spam skill ones of their damage dealers and add a cleanse into the team. Uh, very good unit. Uh, she could also, she's another one that could also run Strack, similar to, who were we talking about with the cleanse? Akades. We were talking about Akades. Uh, similar to Akades, you can run her as your cleanser. There are still a couple better options as cleansers, but you, because she is a warrior, you can put her on Strack if you're having a hard time getting high enough resistance to resist those uh, ML arrows or somebody like that. Um... Up next, Slush from Mercedes. Slush from Mercedes is the best unit for Basar Tywin Cleaves. Unfortunately, outside of that sh and farming, she really has no use. Um, so again, best at what she does, but not overly flexible. Uh, if you are building a Basar Tywin Cleave, then you're probably building her because she's incredibly good at that role, does more damage than anybody else, and you can put her on a rage set to increase that damage even more. Uh, very good unit. Then we have Singelica. Singelica is very interesting. I don't actually have her. She's one of the only units on in the game that I don't have on one of my two accounts right now. Uh, but I have seen her popping up here and there. She's a solid unit. I think people are using her sometimes in um, in like Judge Kize cleaves in arena offense. And you see her sometimes in more of a utility role in RTA. Uh, she can be a lot of fun. I'd have to play around with her a little bit, a little bit more. You might see her climb up this list over time, um, but I, I feel like an A rank is a pretty good spot for her. Up next, we have Fat Cat. And if you've ever looked at the arena defenses in the last hour of the week, you will see him on every single defense across the board. I still argue, I don't think he's very good, but you're kind of forced to use him if you're trying to do high level arena because he's kind of he increases the rng level against your team and slows down the enemy from clearing you and that's kind of what p 
people are aiming for because they just assume they're going to lose if they can make it slower and make people skip you that's your best chance of climbing higher in arena so he is all over the place in arena but that's really the only place he's used right now you can also use him in a counter cleave RTA in RTA um, but I feel like he's one of those pick and fray units like if you know you're going to lose you pick him and maybe you have a chance to win because you get lucky and finally for the A tier, the last unit in the A tier, and somebody that I actually moved up this month, which I know a few people will be really happy about, because he was another one similar to Leo that people didn't necessarily like that I had him as low as I did. Uh, but Dark Corvus, I still think Dark Corvus needs a buff. Um, I think he's kind of bad. But he now at least has a place in RTA where he can be a good last pick as band bait when say somebody brought in like um ssb and another aoe like those hard hitting but not like nuke type characters if they have no way to kill the dark corvus you kind of have to ban him because otherwise he's just going to solo you um so he has a place there and because of that i moved him up to a tier uh in terms of guild war i know a lot of people their argument for him being higher was because he's good at guild war that being said Although he can win in Guild War, I think he's just never the best option. He's another one that it's like, well, maybe he can win that, but so could a thousand other people or combinations of units. Um, I feel like people just pick him because he's like the no thought option. But if they were to think about it, he could probably put together a better team that would clear it faster and more efficiently. Um, but he can technically get the job done. So he falls in at A tier. All right, we're getting into the top tier units in the game now. So we're up to the S tier. Starting from the top on the water side, we have Cerise. Cerise is incredibly scary in either arena defense or in RTA. Very, very fast base speed with, and can completely lock you down. Um, she's got stuns. She's got her self attack bar boost. She's got restrict. She's got slow. Um, slow being as ridiculously strong as it is right now. Uh, she is definitely top tier and one of the faster base speeds in the game. So no, no doubt she belongs up in the upper tiers here. Moving on to DN. DN's another one who went from people thinking she was going to be bad to being broken OP to people not using her. And now she's all over the place in RTA right now. She's one of the most picked units in RTA uh, with the attack buff and the crit resist buff you can just get wins because the other team can't land their damage on you that being said there is a little bit of luck involved there but she's very good at plus the two heals potentially depending on your artifact um and the cleanse the cleanse is being super important right now and self attack bar boost similar to cerise um yeah dn is what she is she's incredibly scary and it should potentially be higher on this list you know what actually I'm going to move her We're gonna, right now in the middle of the video. We're going to make a change. This is tier list history right here. We're going to move her up and we're going to move him down and I will explain why. So we're going to, we already talked about DN, but I do think she deserves that double S rank. She's, she's just so good. Um, I can't, I can't justify not having her higher. Um, she does so much. She's used so often. She's got to be there. Now for Tywin, um, the reason he's going to move down this month is because of the whole Wyvern thing. Uh, he went from being one of the best units in Wyvern to having no use there. Also, Bizarre Tywin Cleaves are not very common anymore. And also, because of just mainly because you have a chance to get resisted. Um, and you don't really see him in RTA. So he's going to drop down one rank this month. And he clears a spot for DN. So I think that makes sense. Up next, we have Lulu. Lulu is one of the upper tier people for Wyvern still. Um, not crazy, crazy good, but she provides a lot of utility in other places. I think she's better than people give her credit for. I really can't justify moving her down just yet, just because she does have two defense breaks, a defense buff, a shield. I I really like her. I think at some point people will start using her more, um, but we'll have to see. 
Up next, we have Elena. And Elena actually moved down this month as well. She was in the double S tier last quarter. Um, I moved her down to S tier this quarter because I just don't feel like she has as much of a use case as she did before. When she first came out, you saw her everywhere. She, You couldn't get away from her. Um, now she's kind of a niche pick in RTA, and that's about it. Um, she's still very, very good, hence the S tier, but not as good as she used to be. Similar to Krau, um, you don't really see Krau anywhere except for RTA, and I feel like there's better options in RTA in terms of defense buffers. Um, I've always kind of thought that, thought that way. He is still very good and can be scary, especially with Aureus. Um, he can end up potentially deleting a really tanky unit, which is fantastic. Plus, the defense buff is really strong in RTA. Uh, you can also abuse him in Guild War. So I, I like him. He is good. Um, I just don't think he deserves to be any higher than this, which I'm sure some people will disagree with, but that's fine. Um, for those people who use him all the time in RTA, they probably have him up in that double S range, but I am keep him there. I think that's where he belongs. Moving on to the fire units, we have Fire Ken, the user of all unused gear. Um, very good bruiser unit. Got a couple defense breaks. He can be very scary. Uh, preventing him from being higher is just the fact that he's fire and doesn't really have any use in PvE. But he can be scary in PvP if you have the moles to build him. Uh, I know if you're like myself, you probably fed all your Kens into ML Ken um, to try and imprint him. But he can still be very strong. Up next, we have Ball and Sazan. Now, Ball and Sazan for the longest time was on the same level as Tenebria. You can see if you sneak a peek ahead that Tenebria is up a tier. Um, she got the next buff and he didn't. He still has an AoE slow, which I think automatically if you have an AoE slow. Um, I'm sorry to all Silk fans when she's down in B. But because he, <laughs> he's got that plus some utility, he has to be ranked higher than that. Uh, the AoE slow, plus he's a mage, plus he's got defense break, plus he's got heal block. He's very, very good. Um, I think people just don't like what he looks like, so people don't want to build him, but he's insanely strong. Moving on, we have Tamarin, the queen of PvE heals. Um, very good in raid, very good in hell raid, very good in tower, very good in abyss. She's good everywhere in PvE. Um, also, probably the Queen of Hall of Trials as well. So, very good unit. But again, being PvE, there are replacements for her. So, she's not mandatory in any way. Um, so, that keeps her from being in the top two tiers. But she's still one of the best units in the game in terms of what she does. And very hard to replace because she also has attack buff. Moving on to the wind units, we have Vildred, one of the best speed imprints in the game again. Plus, he can do AoE nuke damage. He's a great arena offense cleanup unit for Judge Kize Cleaves. Uh, that plus the speed imprint makes him incredibly strong. Uh, the ability to take two turns, plus he's a great farmer, one of the best early game units in the game and still usable late game. Uh, he's going to keep him in that S tier. Moving on, we have Yufin. Yufin is the... Probably the best SSB Guild War counter in the game. Unfortunately, we don't see a lot of her in RTA, although I have seen her a little bit recently. Um, and she doesn't really have a huge place in PvE either. Uh, she used to be used in Banshee and or AZ one-shot teams, but now with level 13, she just can't quite hit hard enough to get the job done there. Um, but... That being said, she's still very, very good at countering probably the best unit in the game in terms of SSB. So she auto, because she's so good at that, she automatically gets a spot on this list in the S tier. Moving on, we have Lilibet. Extinction is OP, plus she just got a new exclusive. Well, she got an update to her exclusive. Wait. She got she got a buff that changed her exclusive, is what I mean. Um, so she, she now has, in her kit automatically, she has... The inability, well, the 20% increase, decreased chance to miss. Uh, I think what's going to end up happening with her is people are going to put her on Oath Key. Now hear me out. I know she's already got it in her kit, but for units that have evasion and the extra miss chance, like a Moonlight Dreamblade, it would be nice to have that 40% decrease miss chance. So against Mercer's, against... ML Violet against Fat Cat 
plus anybody with Dreamblade, like say Fat Cat and Vildred. Um, it'd be very nice to have that 40% decrease miss, ch miss chance. Plus you'd be able to use her against fire units as well, which would be nice. Um, you'd still be only 90% chance to land, but still very strong. She's very good. Moving on, we have Destina, another one who got a buff plus changed exclusive. Um, and similar to a Katie's and Kitty Clarissa, fantastic cleansing unit. So if you're looking for a, a high res cleanser that can deal with ML Air and Dizzy, she's a great option. One, she's opposite element, which is nice. Um, especially most of those teams seem to be relatively water heavy, but she's very, very good. She's probably She's definitely better than Akades and Clarissa at that because when she cleanses, she also boosts everybody else's attack bar, which means you won't get cut in between. So if you have immunity in there, you can also put up immunity. Moving on, we have Vivian. Vivian is very scary right now. The people have been using her. She got her new exclusive, and she's been used a lot in RTA. Uh, three turn immunity plus attack buff plus the ability of her to potentially nuke. Uh, she can be really, really, really scary. Um, and opposite element of SSB as well. And very good Spectre to Nibiru counter. So uh, top tier unit. She's getting a lot of play right now. Moving on to other cleansers, we have Ray. Now, Ray's an interesting one. I'm really enjoying Ray personally. I We got to compare him a little bit to Destina. So... In terms of being counter Dizzy and counter ML Era in RCA with the double strips, he's technically better. Um, he Because he's cleansing and putting up immunity in the same turn, which is fantastic. So he's better at that. Destina is a better overall cleanse. Um, or sorry, better overall healer. So her heals are better. His cleansing is better because he puts up immunity as well. Um, they both have skills. With her exclusive, they both have skill one cleanses. Uh, so it just kind of depends what you're looking for. I sometimes will run them both on the same team if they're going crazy heavy debuffs. Um, but they are both very, very good. And I'm really enjoying my Ray. I use them all the time in RTA. Let's skip over Tywin for a second uh, and continue our thought about cleansers. We have DJ Bissar. Uh, I have these all at S tier because they are kind of niche in terms of what they do, but they're incredible at what they do. Um, he is very similar to Ray in uh, he cleanses and puts up immunity, but he has an attack bar boost. So in that sense, he would be better. Um, now, Ray has a better skill two and a better skill one. So in terms of cleansing anyway and healing, Whereas Basar skill three is probably better. So they're kind of, it depends what you're looking for. In terms of pure cleanse, they're both the same. But they do have slightly different kits otherwise, but they are very similar. Moving on, we have Crimson Armin, another counter cleave unit with full immunity. Um, she's still top tier, even though she got her nerf, she's still very good. If people are trying to cleave you in RTA, Crimson Armin is a great option to try and reduce the incoming damage and hopefully survive. Um, up next, we have Spez. Spez is a weird one. I feel like Spez could be really scary for RTA, but I feel like people just aren't taking advantage of him. I haven't built on my baby account. I just don't really have the gear to make him work. Um, the thing is with him, because his if the unit is stunned, he can kill them basically no matter what his stats. So you could build him bruiser, you could build him fast. Um, he doesn't really need huge attack numbers, so he might be able to use gear that you wouldn't be able to use elsewhere. Um, I would like to have him on my main just to be able to try him out because I feel like he could be really good. Moving on, we have Sage Ball. Uh, Sage Ball, again, another good counter cleave unit. He doesn't have a lot of uses, but he is getting a lot more play in RTA now that RTA has been out a while, so he's very good. Um, I know people complain when they get him because they hear he got nerfed, and he did get nerfed, but that doesn't mean he's not good. Um, he can still completely lock people down with his skill 2 sleep and his skill 1 single target sleep. Uh, his skill 3 isn't great, but in the right circumstances, the full heal can be come in super handy. So, still a very good unit coming in at S tier. And then moving on, we have Benevolent Roman. 
if you guys haven't fought a benevolent Roman yet, he can be so incredibly oppressive. It's crazy. Um, he can basically proc his extra turn, his extra AOE every single turn. We already talked about that with Charlotte. The idea of having skill one AOEs is ridiculous, and I don't think it should be in the game. But that being said, his skill one, when it procs the, uh, the extra turn, has a pushback. And he's a mage, so he can run crown. There's so many things that he can do. He can completely lock down your team. If he's fast enough, he can single-handedly prevent you from ever getting another turn. Um, if, you're, if you're slow enough and he's fast enough, he can lock down your entire team. And you'll never move again just because he'll keep reducing your attack bar over and over. So keep that in mind. He is very strong. And given Molas, I think you'd see him a lot more often. All right, moving on to the dark units and then we're back into the top two tiers we have specter tenebria so specter tenebria got her big buff everybody was so hyped about her now that she's been out a while she's you don't hear people bragging about her nearly as often anymore um she's very very flexible for rta her not being able to be countered is very very strong um because you can deal with like weird units like charles stuff like that She's very good in that regard, but her damage is so bad that I just can't move her up any higher on this list. I use her regularly, and I wish she was better. I wish they would take away her ability to hit a second target with her skill 1, and I wish they would just give her more damage. Because her lack of damage, like, I posted a YDCB fight on the channel a little while ago, and he went CDOM Spectre Tenebria, and he used 60 souls, took three turns with her and wasn't able to kill anything like she's a damage dealer how can you not kill stuff with three turns um she just doesn't hit very hard and until later in the fight later in the fight if you can keep her alive fantastic she can be really really scary um i know i see a lot of people pairing her either with ssb or banning the ssb and then bringing spectre tenebra and rta um it's become a new strategy is project protect specter tenebria but although she's very strong i don't think she's as good as people give her credit for you could argue she could be double s she's probably in between somewhere um but i kind of like her in this s range i don't think she's as good as any of these other units in the double s category moving on we have ml ken I almost moved ML Ken down to this A tier. I really don't think he's good anymore. Um, he's just too easy to counter. There's too many counters out there. Spectre Sneaker being one of them. He's just you can just easily one shot him or just ignore him, and eventually he'll die. Um, very rarely is he the best option. But we're gonna leave him at S tier for now. You may see him moving down depending on the power creep the next little bit. Uh, he's potentially on the list for a potential buff. I feel like he doesn't really do too much right now, so uh, we might see him get a buff sometime in the future. Moving on, Shooting Star Katie. Speaking of units that got a buff, she just moves up into this role um, because she's kind of like a pseudo Ruel replacement. She's very good. She's got her cleanse, she's got her full heal, she's got her revive. Um, We'll see how she goes here. Obviously, she's not at the level of Ruel or Maid, but in terms of Revivers, she's still very strong uh, and I think underused. So she just barely squeaks into this S tier. Up next, we have Rin. Sorry. We have ML Rin. ML Rin just got a buff as well, which moves her up into the S tier as well. Um. She now can stun with her skill too, and if there's no buffs, it reduces her cooldown, which is very strong. I tried her out on a couple different gear sets. I tried her out with super fast gear, like over 300 speed, and it was a lot of fun for a little bit, but I just don't think that's the best build. I think she can do the same thing, but you can also build her tanky in like that 230, 240 speed range. Uh, so I think that's the better build for her is more bruiser-ish. Um, I really like her though. She's been a lot of fun in RTA. I've been using her more and more, and she does get banned a lot. So I think she's a, a definitely a viable unit now, and I'm enjoying using her. Up next, we have BBK, still one of the best cleavers out there in terms of AoE cleaves. 
she can also be used in a decent amount of PvE content. She has self heal. She can be built multiple different ways. I really like BBK. She's very strong. Um, and one of the better AoE damage dealers out there still. Up next, we have Assassin Kali. Amazing base speed. One of the best single target damage dealers in the game. Unfortunately, the thing that's holding her back from being higher on the list is no speed imprint. So think like a Shuri or something. Um, having the speed imprint or a Sid. Uh, even though she's, I've got her ahead of Sid, Sid moves up because of the speed imprint, and she doesn't move up because she doesn't have one. Um, the other thing I don't like about her is that her burn is 20 souls. So 20 souls is a lot when she can't hold book. I kind of wish, like most of the other damage increases, like the BBK damage increase when she soul burns with her skill 3 is one of the biggest in the game. It's only 10 souls. But Kali's is 20. I just feel like that should be 10, where... Everybody else's is 10. It would be nice to have hers be 10 as well. Then we have Blood Moon Haste. Blood Moon Haste is an incredible made Chloe counter. You can also use him technically to counter Vildred, but I think his main role is to counter made Chloe. Um, and he's very, very good at it. Unfortunately, if made Chloe's not in the fight, he all of a sudden is useless and doesn't do anything. So it's... Uh, Although he's top tier at what he does, he is also terrible when that specific unit isn't in the fight. So I can't justify him being any higher than that, but he is very good at what he does. Similar to Assassin Sid, in a different way, however. Uh, Assassin Sid, top tier against speed cleaves. If they're trying to cleave you, you, bring, you can bring in Sid, hopefully at speed, because he's got one of the best base speeds in the game. And he does now with 90 gear. Um he can do enough damage with that speed in order to kill you. So he actually gets a slight boost here just because of 90 gear. Um, that being said, if they're not trying to cleave you and you have Sid, he suddenly does nothing. He will steal your souls, but eventually he'll just die because he's squishy. Um, so he gets he can't move higher just because he's very one-dimensional, but he's very good at what he does. All right, finally, we're on to the final two tiers. Leading off, we have DN. We already talked about DN. Um, I won't touch on her anymore. We talked about her down the S tier before we moved her up. So very, very good. Top tier everywhere. Can't argue that. Attack buff, cleanse, heal, you name it, she's got it. Moving on, we've got Dizzy. Um, I debated moving Dizzy down, but... It seemed weird having all these good water units and having only two units at double S. Um, I don't feel like Dizzy's as good anymore now that there's so many cleanses out there and so many, with 90 gear especially, there's so many options to go to go high res that I don't feel like she's as scary anymore. That being said, if she starts cycling, you're in trouble because... She will either be constantly stripping you or you know what's going to happen. She'll be on counter. She'll counter strip you the turn before. Like, you'll go to put up immunity, with, say, with Cecilia. That's what I do in RTA. I'm like, okay, I'll use my Cecilia to put up immunity. I'll put up my immunity. Dizzy will instantly counter strip all immunity, and then she'll, it'll be her turn, and she'll debuff me. I'm like, really? The odds of that are... Like, the 20% chance to counter plus the quad violence strip, it's not a good chance to land or ever happen, but it seems to happen more often than I'm comfortable with. So, she still can be very good, and I'm going to leave her there for now. We'll see what happens next month. But, for now, Dizzy still double S. Moving on to the fire units. These are the top fire units in the game. The only element that doesn't have any triple S units, in my opinion... We're going to lead off with Lilius. Lilius being, again, a great cleanser. Most people don't run Lilius with ultra-high resistance. You could, however, do that if you wanted to, if you want to use her as your counter debuffer. Um, but a lot of people just run her more bruiserish, and she does a great job of that, especially cycling with units like Ravi or Flurry, um, or even Spectre Tenebria. She can be very, very strong and very scary. Add to that her cleanse, and she can also be using counter cleaves as well. Moving on, we have Fire Tenebria. Fire Tenebria is 
probably the only the only unit from Fire I would consider putting triple S. That being said, similar to Dizzy, with all the cleanses that are out now and all the different options now, uh, you've got the oh we missed Tywin. Crap. We'll go back to Tywin after this. <laughs> but that reminds me. Um Tenebria, similar to Dizzy with all her debuffs, now with all the cleanses and stuff, she's not as good as she was a couple months ago. But she's still very, very, very strong. If she's another one, if she starts cycling, look out. Um, that you know she's going to get that team up sleep into somebody randomly, boosting her into her skill three, and then she's going to land quad defense break, quad sleep on your entire team, and you're going to be dead. So. Keep an eye out for her if you didn't already know how good she is. She's definitely worth building. Again, a bit of a mole issue, but outside of that, she's insane. Uh, up next, we have Kron, and reluctantly, I moved him up on the list. He was S last quarter, and I moved him up. I hate Kron with a passion. He's one of my most hated units in the game. Um, but he's got so much use right now. He's very much counter Spectre Tenebria, and... Even counter cleave as well. He's hard to deal with. Um, you got You kind of have to stun him, and then if you also have a cleanse, you can wake him up. And it's just he's a pain to deal with. That along with the fact that he kind of abuses basket because um, he only needs to get to proc once. So when you proc basket and you get the greater attack buff, normally it's a one turn crit buff or greater attack buff or both. With him, however, because he can kill somebody and extend his debuffs, he can basically just wait, and eventually he's going to get the greater attack buff, and then he can keep it, and then he can keep it again, because you proc his passive, and he ends up keeping basically permanent greater attack buff, as long as he gets it to proc one time, and it's only 40% chance, so odds are he's going to get it to proc one time, but once he's got it, he could have it for three or four turns straight minimum. Um, if you don't kill him and what because he can burn into his skill one aoe for only 10 souls whereas our friend collie over there um takes 20 souls to burn into her skill three single target um but kiron having a greater attack aoe skill one that you can burn into for only 10 souls over and over again well i it gives me nightmares so very very strong just because of that also very viable on knife um i know in top 30 rta a lot of people have switched from basket over to knife just because it's more reliable so keep that in mind as well let's finish off the fire and we'll go back to tywin um next up we have cecilia cecilia definitely moved up i moved her up from s rank she's had a weird past cecilia was double s then Lilius came in and kind of took over the fire tank meta, and Cecilia actually dropped. But then Cecilia got her buff, and now with RTA, she's definitely moving back up again. Um, she's as good as anybody in the fire category for sure. She's got team immunity. She's got AoE provoke. She's got self shield. She's got uh, AoE attack break. She's got single target defense break. Um, plus, she can hold either Aureus or Adamant. She does it all. You want to talk about a unit that is flexible and does multiple things for RTA? She is top, top, top tier. Um, you could argue higher than this. I've actually had people pre-ban her in RTA because of how strong she is. Um, you're starting to see more and more of her as people get her mullet as well. All right, dropping back down to Tywin. I apologize that this is going to be out of order. If you came here looking for Tywin, here he is. Um, so Tywin with his most recent buff is now really scary. He was already really good. The funny thing is that I had him at S tier already. I kind of want to move him up to double S, but I wasn't sure. Um, I already had him at S tier, and now that they added the stun, I feel like he has to move up. Not moving up after a buff like that is crazy, but... I feel like he's in a good spot here in like in between S and double S. He counters a lot of the current things because he has that cleanse every once a turn. He can cleanse a buff from our debuff from everybody, which is ridiculous. Plus, he steals souls, so he's great in longer fights. Plus, he's got an AoE slow. Plus, he's got an AoE stun. Plus, he can do big damage as a bruiser. All in all, Tywin is one of the scariest units in RTA right now, and... 
I would not be surprised if next month he is double S at least. Um, so we're going to leave him in between for now, but I expect him to move up next quarter. Uh, that being said, his buff did just come out. So a lot of people don't have him built yet. A lot of people haven't really planned teams for him or against him. We'll have to see how he does before we officially move him in either direction. All right, back to the double S. We have Charles. Charles is only here because of his interaction with Elbrus. Without Elbrus, he probably is like an A rank. Um, he's another one. I mentioned this with Fat Cat. He's kind of a pick and pray option. If you're behind in the fight and you pick Charles, you have a chance to win. And he can potentially solo any team if he goes crazy. The amount of times where I've taken first four turns and he's counterattacked four consecutive single target attacks and somehow managed to strip all four units, even though he hasn't even taken a turn yet, and all his attacks are single target, is mind-blowing. Um, so because of that, he's going to stick at S tier. I don't like him. I think he's very RNG dependent. But if you need to get lucky, like you want to put him on your Guild War defense, he's going to cheese you some wins every time. And there's, there's nothing the enemy can do about that. So... Charles definitely deserving of his double S tier, even though I'm not a fan of his. Then we have Isaria. Isaria will forever be one of the best units in the game. I did recently drop her from triple S to double S. Just because people aren't really utilizing her all that much, I do think she's still insane. Um, for some reason, I feel like people are stuck to thinking about her as a Tamarin pairing. And because she doesn't you can't really do Tam Isaria in RTA. People kind of stopped using her. But every time I use her in RTA, she comes through in the clutch. She's got the defense breaks. She's got the strip. She's got the reset. She is incredible. Um, you don't want to face an Isaria in RTA because you can pair her with anybody, and that unit gets twice as good as they were. So um, one of the best team players, one of the best utility units in the game, Isaria. I really like her, and I wouldn't be surprised if at some point she gets used a little bit more. Moving on to the light units, we have Judge Kize. Judge Kize, the best A weak leave unit in the game still. I know there are people that still use her in arena offense and in very high level legend arena offense, so she will still stay at that double S range, even though she's used significantly less than she used to be, um, just because it's so much harder to AoE cleave in arena now, but she's still definitely an option. Up next, we have Meg Chloe, one of the best revivers in the game. You could make an argument that her or Ruel is better, depending on the situation. Personally, I prefer Maid. Um, I think overall, Ruel with her base stats and her highest defense in the game kind of gives her the edge. I still really like Maid though, because of the attack buff. Um, but she comes in at double S. Next, we have LQC. LQC is one of the hardest units to face in RTA right now. Plus, she's OP in Guild War. You're starting to see her in Arena as well. With her damage reduction, plus her nuke potential, plus with in RTA, her frenzy stacks, she is just ridiculously strong. Um, come the end of an RTA fight, she can one-shot any unit in the game, including Ruel. Um... But her damage against dark units, when there's so many good dark units, like, if we take a quick glance through this, being able to one-shot Corvus, Cartusia, Singelica, Haste, BBK, Rin, ML Ken, like, particularly good against Cecilia and Champion Zerato, just ridiculous how strong she is. She counters all the best units in the game. And looking up at the triple S tier, also being able to counter Arbiter, Vildred, and Ravi, and be able to give her um, self-immunity as well, which helps her counter units like Dizzy, or Tenebria, or Ball, or any defense break. Like, she's crazy. Um, that self-immunity, plus being able to burn into her skill one again, being able to give herself back immunity if she burns. Um, just insane, strong, insanely strong unit right now. You could argue she should be higher, but that top tier is pretty stacked, so we're going to leave her at double S for now. Moving on to the dark units and the end of the double S tier, we have Fallen Cecilia, 
forever one of the best defense units in the game. The AoE skill prevent plus AoE shield plus shield every single turn plus 30k HP plus Aureus slash adamant shield. You name it. Fallen Cecilia is the prototypical keep your team alive type unit. Um, very, very strong. She'll always be very strong if you have her. I'm sure you already have her built, so you don't need me to talk about her. Champion Zerato up next. Champion Zerato is still very strong. Um, I don't see him used as much, but he is a huge Dizzy counter, Tenebria counter, Bizarre counter. Um, he counters some of the best units in the game, which makes him automatically really good. Uh, I wish I had better gear for mine personally, but he is still very strong and hard to deal with. Although, if you have Queen Charlotte, just bring your Queen Charlotte in and delete him and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, up next, Oxlots. Um, actually, before we go to Oxlots, let's talk about him one more time. A lot of people try and bring him into SSB because he is a supposed SSB counter. Phew, bless me. Uh, he's a supposed SSB counter. That being said, if SSB uses her skill 3, and she has immunity when she does it. She can buff block, heal block Zerato. Zerato tries to give it back to her, but she still has immunity. But it then, because she already skill three, hitting four people, when he revenges her, or even in Guild War, because she hit three people, but whether she hits three or four people, he then counters, which gives her her five stacks, and it lets her counter again. Theoretically, her skill 3 into his counter into her skill 2 could kill everybody. So I really don't think Zerato is an SSB counter. I know people seem to think that for some reason. But more often than not, if you bring Zerato into SSB, if the other team knows what they're doing and they've got immunity, you probably just killed yourself because you didn't get a chance to move in between her taking two AoEs, especially if she has drink. Um, Two AoEs with drink means your entire team could be dead. Up next, Oxlots. Oxlots, the best booster paired with Kize. Uh, attack buff boost allows you to take first turn. He's got decent base speed. Everyone knows what Oxlots does by now. Um, he might, it, I mean, with the Selene introduction, he may end up taking a bit of a hit. I've still been using him in RTA and without issue, so... Maybe it's just because people don't have Selene built yet, but we'll have to see. If Selene becomes very meta, then Oxlots will take a bit of a hit, but you could always ban her as well. Up next, we have Seedom. Seedom, one of the best nukers in the game. She's got some of my best gear. I can delete absolutely anybody with her. I just need to get her a turn. Uh, the attack bar boost, plus the crit boost, plus the team boost as well. Insanely strong, plus she can hold her own book to burn into it. Um, I actually moved her up on the list, which is kind of funny given the Selene introduction, but we'll have to see what happens. Uh, she could end up moving down if Selene becomes meta as well, but for now, I think she's well deserving of that double S rank. And finally, let me see if I can, there we go. The final tier. I, tr I always tried to keep this to only five units, but I feel like the game is more balanced now than it's ever been, courtesy of some of the more recent units and some of the more recent buffs. So I abandoned that principle. Last month we had, I think we had three people in Triple S, and then we had three others that were not balanced and in Triple S Plus. So for the first time, we don't have anybody in triple s plus which is kind of nice we have ssb triple s she's still the strongest unit in the game she's still the most broken unit in the game but i don't think she's at the point where she's insanely unbalanced anymore um to the point where she needs a nerf i don't th i think she's still kind of broken and her interaction with drink i think is a little too strong i think that I would probably make it so that Drink doesn't proc on her skill 2 if I was going to try and balance it. But, that being said, I don't think she needs a nerf anymore. I think there's plenty of ways to counter her. Um, plenty of things you can do to deal with her now. And 
she's still very strong, don't get me wrong, and she's still the best unit in the game, but I think she's okay now. Up next we have Cigarette. Cigarette, I'm sure someone's going to give me shit for putting Cigarette at triple S, but honestly I don't care. She is top tier. And if you don't think she's top tier, you don't have her built because you've never, you've obviously never used her if you don't think she should be triple S. She has the best damage in the game. She is the best Wyvern unit in the game, by far, especially now with Wyvern 13. She already was, but given Wyvern 13, she also has the debuffs, plus she can do 100,000 plus damage with her skill 3. Um, and then on top of all that, she has Extinction and is OP for Guild War and for RTA as well. Uh, the amount of times I've gone into or Arena, I use her in Arena Offense, I use her in Guild War Offense, I use her in RTA, I use her in my Wyvern team, I use her in Hall of Trials, I use her everywhere. I probably use her... You could argue I use her more than any other unit. Maybe Lydica. You could argue I use her in... Well, I at least use her in more places than anybody else. Um, plus, she's got some of the best damage in the game. Uh, if you haven't built her yet, you should. You're missing out. Um, nothing else I can say about that. The fact that she has Extinction, she can go into an arena offense against Fat Cat and a Vildred with Oath Key. She can skill 2 kill the Fat Cat and then skill 3 kill the Vildred and Extinct. There's no other unit in the game that can kill both Fat Cat and Vildred reliably than Sigrid. And... That's one of the hardest combos to deal with. She can also do the same thing to SSB. She can skill 2 kill SSB and then skill 3 kill Vildred all in the same turn. Um, Oxlot Cigarette is ridiculously broken right now. And you should definitely take advantage of that while wow, she's as strong as she is. Up next, skipping over fire, moving on to wind, we have Bissar. Bissar still got to be triple S because... the fact Just because the fact that he's the one with the strip. So... You need him to Dizzy. You need him to Tenebria. Without him, those units are just average, right? You need to land the strip. And there's a lot of other strips out there, but his is guaranteed if you burn into it. The fact that he can have the guaranteed strip, plus forcing you to cleanse first before you put up any buffs. So say you have a Maid Chloe. If I have a Maid Chloe and someone runs Harado or any other strip, I can just put up my Maid Chloe buff and I'm good. When Bissar does it, it prevents me. Not only does it strip me, but it prevents me from buffing as well. So if I'm running, for example, a DM, I'm forced to use my skill 2 before I skill 3, and then they can still get all their damage off without worry of crit resist. So Bissar still triple S. He's got to be triple S. There's nothing we can do about it. Um, also on crown, you know he's going to land that clutch single target crown stun when you need to avoid it the most, but that is Bissar. Um, he is very strong if you haven't built him as well. Up next, Alencia. Somebody that some of you may be surprised to see on here if you don't do a lot of PvP. But, Guild War, or sorry, he she is on my Arena Defense, which currently is hovering somewhere between 40 and 50% in uh, Legend Arena. She's my, a lot of times, my first pick in RTA. She's on my Guild War defense. She's on my Guild War offense. You could potentially use her in PvE as well. She is ridiculous. She's one of the best units in the game. She is first picked at least as much as anybody else in RTA right now. She's one of the most common first picks in RTA. Most contested first picks in RTA. She has a full strip similar to Bissar. You just can't burn into it. But she has defense buff. She does huge damage. The amount of times that I've people have tried to cleave me, I've gotten one turn with Alencia and just wiped their entire team only with an Alencia turn. Is crazy. Um, she also has a single target nuke to go with her AoE nuke. And she's hard as hell to kill because she's 23k HP. Um, she is potentially the scariest unit for me to face anywhere. Um, she's very hard to deal with. You don't want you don't want her to get through most of the time. Up next, we have Ruel. Ruel, as we talked about with the Maid Chloe, um, 
one of the best survivors in the game. She has the highest base defense in the game, or at least tied for the highest ba base defense in the game. Very good in RTA, as defense scaling units do very well there due to Frenzy. Um, also very good in Guild War, and a lot of people use her on Arena defense still. Crazy strong unit. She always will be. She's still currently in the Mystic rotation, and you have a few days left to pull her if you want to. I'm very sad I didn't get her. Um, I got her on my baby account, but congrats to everyone that has her. Best best healer in the game right now, uh, or at least best reviver in the game. Up next, we have Faithless Lydica. So Faithless Lydica is the, the key to all my offenses. She's my Guild War offense, Arena offense, and RTA offense. Um, she doesn't really use anywhere else, although I'm sure you could. But with her buff, she has to move up to triple S. She's, that skill prevent makes her so, so, so good. Plus, you can have her boost your CDOM. You can have her reset any of these units, including high-res units, because you don't care if she's squishy, so you can run her on effecting the string. Um, plus, she's got a strip. She does it all. And even her blind on her skill one comes in handy. She is an incredible enabler. Um, when you compare it to someone like Bissar, she has a push instead of a push back. Um, because she boosts your units up, you don't have to worry about resistance. So yes, Bissar can burn to negate that, but then you have to use 20 souls. If you don't burn into Bissar, you could get resisted on the pushback and you could be screwed. With her, she's just boosting. So you're always going to get a turn. Um, I've had a few fights recently where people tried to cleave me. They didn't ban my Lydica. My Lydica ended up going first because she was faster than them. She boosted. I got the strip. My She got the next turn because she gets 100% attack bar. She reset their Oxlots, meaning their Oxlots couldn't go to boost. And then because I boosted, my Alencia went next and nuked their entire team. So I ended up taking two turns with her, one turn with Alencia, and... They never moved. Their their whole cleave team never got a single turn because just because of Lydica. So very very strong. And finally, two of the top three broken units in the game, A Vildred. The fact that he still lands blind, almost guaranteed on no matter how much res you have, he always lands it, is incredibly annoying. That plus the basket procs can be crazy. Um, with the multiple turns and instant turn off of revive that can't be cut. Um, one of, the, one of the top units in the game, best farmer in the game, uh, very, very strong. I'm sure everybody already knows. That being said, he was triple S plus last quarter, and I did drop him down because there are more counters to him now with the cigarette. Easier to build on the little bet. Um, you've now got haste. You've now got Singelica. You've got so many ways to counter him that he is a lot easier to deal with now, and that moves him down to triple S. Um, in terms of Guild War, I really don't think he's even that good on Guild War defense anymore. But he can still be very scary in RTA. Um, especially if you're trying to cleave and you don't bring options to kill him. But that's Vildred. And finally, the unit who I think is actually better than Vildred is Ravi. Ravi can literally solo any team in the game. Crazy strong right now. Um, plus her revive, her self-heal. She is almost impossible to deal with in RTA if you're not cleaving. Uh, also, Guild War, she can basically auto any Guild War defense. Um, if you don't, if you haven't shown her love, she's another one that you should show love to. So, that's going to be it for our tier list for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I am really, really thirsty. <laughs> but we managed to get it in in under an hour and a half, which, considering how many new units there are, is not too bad. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. These videos do take a lot of effort to put out, especially ones that are an hour and a half long. I hope you appreciated it. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Also, if you want to talk to me about it on stream, I'm sure we'll be talking about it for the next week or so. That'll be twitch.tv slash fivefingershuffle. And one last thing, we finally did get partnered on Twitch, and I'm very excited about it. So if you guys didn't know, uh, feel free to come jump on to Twitch. We got a whole bunch of new emotes and new sub badges and a whole bunch of new stuff because we finally got partnered. Um, very exciting for the channel. Very exciting. Thank you to all of you for the help and support over the last couple of years. So thank you again for watching. I hope everyone has a great day, and we will see you all next time. Bye for now, guys.